Okay, now let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. I would like to teach you how to produce fruit because many people get discouraged about not producing enough fruits for the Lord. How many of you get discouraged about not producing enough fruits for the Lord? How many of you want to produce enough fruit so that you're confident at the judgment seat of Christ when God judges you and then he rewards you? How many of you want to be ready for the rapture and not saying there's so much that I've got to do? This teaching is for you. By the way, I want to rebuke all these so-called Bible believers who should know better, and they know all the doctrines from head to toe, and these guys, I'm going to tell you something, they're going to be butt naked at the judgment seat of Christ. <laughs> that, I'm including myself too, if I'm not careful. You know why? It doesn't matter how much Bible you know. People assume you're spiritual. I want people online to listen to me here. I'm not spiritual because of how much Bible I know in my head. That's just one of the fruits of the spirits. You can know so much Bible and live like the devil. Amen. Because the devil is the devil, and he knows more Bible than you. Okay, now, with that positive thought in mind, I'm going to uh, this is going to be a preaching and an encouragement. All right? This is going to be a preaching and an encouragement. So this is why I really despise online people starting their own movement. Well, that includes you, Pastor. Amen. Keep me in check, man. Keep me in check. If I end up like one of them, boy, I'd, shoot or bl I'd sooner blow my brains out than become like one of them, okay? I don't want to act like one of those sore losers who just trolling every Bible believer, naming them all out, and then end up 60 years old still doing like that with my skin turning pale, and then uh, being like a hermit out of the middle of no man's land. Yeah. Boy, I'd hate oh, to end up like that. Yeah. I'd hate to end up like a person who... Uh, is disowned and separated by Bible-believing churches and pastors, and I do nothing but my own little movement. Amen. I hate to end up like that. If I do, I'd sooner shoot my brains out, man. So you got to realize this, is that producing fruits, you got to realize, is important, and I am sick and tired of arrogant, proud Christians. And I don't care if they're King James only, they know so much Bible. Okay, so let's talk about the fruits of the Spirit, verse 22. Tell me if you see right here anything that refers to doctrine, knowing all the Bible. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Do you see those fruits of the Spirit with those onliners when they start to teach and criticize fellow Bible believers? Boom. They have no fruit of the Spirit then. I don't care how much Bible they know. The fruit of the Spirit, you'll notice, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Do you see that in them? See that? If, if they don't have those fruits within them, all their teaching was for what? Ooh. Ooh. I won't be so extreme to say nothing, but people online and people in here can assume it's nothing. But in case I get trouble, you might get something, but that's very little something. There's your fruits of the Spirit. How are you street preaching, huh? How are you preaching, huh? How are you soul winning, huh? Do you have these in you? Another thing is this, is that you got to die to sin. Die to sin. How many people live like the devil and in sin, and they can get all their doctrines right? How many people can attend Bible-believing churches? How many people can never skip a church service, win hundreds of souls to salvation, get everything right from head to toe, and they don't die to sin. Yeah. Where are your fruits? Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. John 12, verse 24. And then uh, I'll, we won't turn there for time's sake, but I'm going to go to Romans chapter 6 and verse 11. So go to John chapter 12, verse 24. How does fruit produce? You must die first. And I'll tell you one thing. These people online, they are full of self, and that is apparent and evident that they criticize everybody but themselves. That is completely full of pride, and they don't have any fruit. You can't produce fruit until you die to self. Do you know why these people don't get along with Bible-believing pastors? They're full of their own little virtual world. All they see is themselves, what they think, they believe, their own viewpoint. They have not dealt with lost people. They have not dealt with people in Bible-believing churches. They have not dealt with Bible-believing pastors, and they throw out a rash judgment, a rash assumption, because they are completely full of self. Amen. 
you got to die to self. That's how the Lord will produce fruit. If there's any fruit in my life, I'm not saying I have a lot, but if I have any fruit in my life, it's because I strongly, and I mean this, I strongly believe in this. Amen. It's about the member, not you. It's so easy as a pastor or as a Bible-believing Christian to think everybody's got to follow your standard, your own way. But you got to realize this. It's not about you. It's about others. Amen. And until you die to that, then you can start producing fruit. That's why you got to show kindness. You got to show gentleness, long-suffering with people who are not as spiritual as you. See? You got to show that. Where is it? Look at John chapter... Uh, 12, verse 24. Notice the Bible says right here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth what? You want it? Okay, that's it. Luke 13, verse 9. It reads right here. Don't turn over there. But it says, And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. So that's Luke 13, verse 9. And then Romans 6, 11. Romans 6, 11. So you see, if you won't die, God will have you die. Romans 6, 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God. Look at that. Another thing I read to you, Luke 13, 7, that showed you dying because why? God will cut you down. So if you won't cut yourself down, you don't want God to cut you down. Amen? That's good, brother. So here's another thing. A fruitless Christian cannot go with the favor of God. Do you understand that? God's favor should be on it in your fruit. Do you have God's favor before you spit out something stupid and dumb online? People say, oh, I know I'm right. I know I'm right and stuff like that. You can argue what's right and your heart is not right with God. Good, He's stupid, arrogant, and I say that with, with righteous indignation without any guilty conscience they are incredibly stupid, prideful, and arrogant to spit out something out of their mouths like that against God's people whom he's using for his glory. And then these people just spit it out without having a second thought of, how will I be judged for that, the judgment seat? So before you post hundreds of videos with some person's name and you got no life because you're such a loser posting nobody's names but Bible believers to criticize and critique, you better have a clean conscience. I have a clean conscience at the judgment seat of Christ. I know God will favor the videos that I put. Not stupidly saying, this is my video, my channel. I can do what I want. If you don't like it, then get out of the channel. Okay, God will not go in part of your channel. You like that? Then God can get out of your channel. Say that God favors this video and pray that before you spit something stupid out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. You bunch of wicked people, and I'm including King James only, dispensational, Bible-believing Christians like me. Amen. Wicked, evil people. And I mean that, evil. How you can tell is by their fruits ye shall know them. By their fruits. Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 20. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 20. Don't turn there for time's sake, but it says, By their fruits ye shall know them. So you got to realize this. A lot of people judge by the quantity of fruits, and that's not how it's done. I'm not right to have 80-something subscribers online. It's because of the quality of what I'm teaching Amen. and preaching. And the quality is judged at verses 16 through 17. How's the quality of your fruit? Okay, I don't care if you have 200,000 subscribers, 40,000 subscribers, you know, how many subscribers. I don't care if you're uh, 1,000 people in church, 5,000 people in church. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're spiritual and that God is using you. Amen. Okay, God is using you to reach maybe those numbers, but that's it. And you got to realize this, your quality can stink to high heaven. Amen. Billy Graham gets hundreds of thousands, but what? He's totally going to be without fruit at the judgment. Another thing is by living by the word of God, living by the word of God. So that's found at Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, which we won't turn to. But Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, fruit is by living by the word. So I don't care if uh, a person is full of Love, joy, peace. They're wonderful pastors. They're caring pastors. They love me. They help me out in situations. Praise the Lord. But see that? All the fruits of the Spirit? No. It's also living by the Word. Your heart 
can be very sincere and pure and right, but that doesn't mean your doctrine is not right. That doesn't mean your doctrine's right. Besides, if your heart is truly right, you get your doctrine right. So you got to realize this doctrine is also important that you got to get right with the Lord. So I don't care if they're loving people. They teach something wrong against the word of God that's heresy. That's why I will criticize them. Why did you criticize this pastor, loving pastor, helpful pastor, stuff like that? You know why? They're teaching heresy that's against the word of God. So you got to realize fruit is not just this, folks. It's this one, too. You see how balanced this is? You see how balanced this is? Now, how's your fruits after hearing all this? Colossians 1.10. You know what fruits will do? It will increase into more. So we don't get discouraged about, you know, having little fruit. But you should get discouraged if it doesn't increase. You should get discouraged is that if it, you don't see anything more that the Lord produces in your life. And I don't mean numbers. I don't mean results. I mean the fruits of the Lord, how the Lord's using in your life right here. Your self-maturity. So in Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, it says when you're fruitful in a certain work, it's going to increase into more. That's why one, one Bible believer in Silicon Valley who starts something will produce 10 more, 20 more, 100 more, thousands more of Bible believers. Amen. See that? A soul winner will produce more soul winners. A preacher will produce more preachers. And that is the greatest blessing of a fruit that you will ever see in your life that I'm experiencing right now, praise the Lord. Amen. And I, I thank God. The things I will never trade for is the fruits that he blessed me with. You people online, you people here in this church, Amen. as something that I will never trade the world for. It starts with you. What are you going to do about it?